Gospel by Mark, Gospel by Mark, chapter 1. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy, my faith, thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. This is speaking of John the Baptist here. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John did baptize uh, in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission or for the forgiveness of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ. I indeed baptize you with water, but he that he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. See, God in heaven could never say that of anyone of you and I. Anyone else in this whole wide world. It was only the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's God in a body. You see, God was manifest in the flesh. God came down in the person of Jesus Christ to die upon the cross. And he was clothed with a body that in that body he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. He died on the cross for you and for me and for everyone in, on this whole wide world and everyone that will be born and has been born. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My question to, to you this afternoon, do you have everlasting life? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you become a child of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? And immediately the Spirit driveth him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness, forty days tempted of Satan. And was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That's still the same message today. Repent ye, that is, come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. That is coming to God and agreeing with him, yes, I realise that I am a sinner. And then what you need to do is put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And that will get you everlasting life. It's nothing that we can do, but it's the work, the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross that's all sufficient to pay for your sins and mine. In his own precious blood when he was crucified, he shed his precious blood that day, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Now what is the gospel you might say? The gospel is this, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God, to be born again into God's family through faith. 
in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when they had uh, gone a little further thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship, mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine for his teaching, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was uh, in their synagogue a man uh, with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. These are the demons saying this. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commanded, uh, for with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Forthwith, when uh, they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and they uh, and them that were possessed with demons, and all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse de diseases, that means different diseases, and cast out many demons, and suffered or permitted not the demons to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out demons. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See, thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and uh, to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. Mark chapter 2, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. 
Straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, uh, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four, or carried by four people. And when they could not come nigh or near unto him for the press, for the, for the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed where, uh, wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Now they were, they were bang on, they were dead correct about that. Who can forgive sins but God only? But they failed to understand that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, is God. They didn't recognize him as God, manifest in the flesh. See, the Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven's glory, and in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, God was manifested in him. And we need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ, he is God. He claimed to be God, and he is God. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is above all. You see, God created all things by Jesus Christ. And so we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all instrumental in creating this whole universe in which earth is just a little speck. But we still see that God loves us. He, God displayed the fact that he loves us. How did he do that? But God commended his love toward us. That means he exhibited his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, he died on the cross of Calvary for you and for me because of our sin. He has no sin of his own. The Lord Jesus Christ does not have the sinful nature that you and I have that causes us to want to go our own way, do our own thing, and rebel against the commandments of the Lord. And because we have that sinful nature, this makes us sinners. And we go out and do our own thing. But God does not want us to live independently of Him. He created us to worship Him and to obey Him and to glorify Him. And that's not what we're doing when we're sinning. We're disobeying the Lord. Sin is the transgression of the law. It's unlawful in the sight of the Lord to do the things that we're doing. But there is forgiveness with God that he may be feared. And God wants to forgive you of all of your sins. This evening, if you turn to Christ, if you put your faith in Christ, trust in him, your soul will be saved. And you'll have forgiveness for your sins and peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is, e is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. You see, this man was healed of his, of his palsy, and he was also saved. He had forgiveness for his sins. I wonder, have you received forgiveness for your sins? It's all bound up in a person. That person is our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. We need to understand the wrath of God is abiding or hovering over our heads if we do not have Jesus Christ as our Saviour. If he's not our Saviour, he will have to be 
our judge. It's either one or the other. It's your choice. God has given us the power of choice. Immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at me in his house, many publicans, that's tax collectors and sinners, sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. When the uh, scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, or with tax collectors and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? You see, the Pharisees and the scribes, the Pharisees were a very self-righteous sort of a people. They thought they were better than other people. And we've got to understand that all of us are sinners in the sight of God when we're born into this world. We need to be made saints. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see these self-righteous people thinking they're better than other people. It's, it's not right. Yes, you and I might not have uh, committed such bad sins as other people. That is true. But the fact remains that this, that you and I, when we're born into this world, we're born as sinners. We need forgiveness for those sins. The only way of forgiveness is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that he shed for us freely upon the cross of Calvary when he was crucified for you and for me. When Jesus heard it, he uh, said unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now what's he saying? He's saying that, look, if we're not sick, we don't need a doctor. But then he said, only the ones that are sick need the doctor. But you and I have to realize we have a sickness even worse than this coronavirus. It's called the sickness of sin. It's taking us down to hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell. He wants you to be in heaven. And that's why I'm here again this evening, pleading with you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God through faith alone in Him and have forgiveness for your sins. The Lord Jesus Christ came not to call the righteous, that is, those that think they're okay, those that think they're good enough for God. None of us are. None of us can measure up to the righteous standard of Almighty God. We need to understand that. The only one that measured up to that standard is the Lord Jesus Christ. He did always those things that please the Father. And the disciples of John uh, and of the Pharisees used to fast, and they come, uh, come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. And then shall they fast in those days. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that... Uh, filled it up, taketh away from the old, and the rent or tear is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And it came to pass that uh, he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples 
man as they wept upon the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, now this is grain, it's not corn as, as in sweet corn that we know. This is uh, corn like as in grain. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was an hungry? He and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the showbread which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. You and I, the biggest need that we have is salvation. You and I need to be saved. We need to have forgiveness for our sins. Without that forgiveness, we are going down to hell. We cannot make it any plainer than that. And I would not beat around the bush with this because it's too critical that you understand your sinful condition before the Lord. Now, I was in this condition before without my sins forgiven. But now I've received forgiveness for my sins. I want you to receive forgiveness for your sins. And the only way of forgiveness is through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross and our right response to that. You see, you can say, I don't really care. Walk away and just walk away from the Lord Jesus Christ, as it were, and say that he doesn't mean anything to me. But if you do that, you will end up dying and going down to hell. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men who have We must be saved. If you ever want to be in heaven, you'd have to come God's way. And God's way is through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of Christ. His precious blood that was shed upon that cross is the only detergent that God has for your sin. And mine. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will he be your saviour? Or will he have to be your judge? Make a wise choice this evening. Get right with God as a result of repentance toward God, as I keep on saying, that is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. Be honest in the sight of God. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. See that heaven or hell, what will it be for you? Is determined by what you do with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.